So we had um, a lot of success in Tomball ISD with rolling out these supports for students and really talking to teachers and students and parents and administrators. Um, pretty much there wasn't a stone unturned in Tomball ISD. I would hope that if you asked anybody here what CAT means, that they would say curriculum access tools. Um, but this is just one video that is depicting someone who is a fantastic, fabulous teacher, but is just not a lover of technology and the tools and those kind of things. Um, and so this is her testimony of her experience once she started using CoWriter with her students. It's authentic. It's their voice. It's not us guiding them in what to say. It's what they feel. The way it's a tool to use to improve or enhance the ability you already have. It's not trying to pull teeth anymore. It's actually been very easy for me. Um, it's, a, it's very user friendly. I've been able to show some other teachers. Either. So again, just um, an amazing oh, there we go, an amazing testimonial from a teacher who wasn't exactly excited about using more technology um, and just the complete turnaround she saw on her students when they were able to feel success um, and being able to reach that grade level curriculum with just some minor supports for them that we can provide even for all students. Um, so just a huge success story there. Another one that I would like to share is that in 2017, we started out with, um, by the end of the year, 16 million words read, 16,590,209 words read across the district. Um, so that is something that we can monitor, is how many actual words are being read using Snap and Read in the district by students. And so that is where we ended after the first year. It was okay. We did pretty well. I mean, that was when we were throwing it out there, teaching everybody how to do it. We were pretty excited. Um, but then we set a higher goal for 2018-2019, didn't quite reach it. Um, we got to 28 million that year by the end of the year, 128,326. Um, but then you can see a pretty big jump um, in 2019-2020. And I will tell you, probably most of the jump in 2019-2020 was in the spring. So talk about pressure sometimes being a privilege. Um, one of the things that I think COVID has really even shown us more, not that we didn't already know, but yes, we have to be compliant. Yes, we have to have that base of compliance um, and we have to have those documents that show what our plan is and what we're going to do, but really those outcomes are what matter and those students and those teachers realize when everything happened and we went to those emergency home plans, remote learning plans, they really started using their tools. Um, and so we saw a huge jump in the number of words read through Snap and Read. And by the end of the year, um, last year, in that 2019-2020, we had 49,151,672 words read. And I am amazed amazed right now because our goal is to get to 90 million by the end of this year 2022 um, or 2021 sorry don't want to jump that far ahead um, our goal is to get to 90 million and as of last week when I 
took, made the snapshot um, from Snap and Read, we are already up to almost 80 million words read now, um, just at the end of October. So uh, beginning of November. So I am very excited. Um, I think we're going to probably double that 49 million that we had at the end of 2020 by the end of 2021. And I think that just goes to show that the kids really are, the students really are using those auditory supports to help them access that curriculum for outcomes so that they can understand the material, they can read the material, they can work with the material, um, they can work on vocabulary skills, work on the context, um, so it just really goes to show that sometimes that pressure really does show you what supports and things are needed. So it's great and quite a celebration for us in Tomball. So we wanted to, after that 2017-2018 year when we started it off, we wanted to keep that momentum going. You know, we were rolling and rocking and rolling with um, Snap and Read and with CoWriter and UPAR and we were going to keep that going. We're continuing it with our district improvement plans, with our district goals, with our department goals. It's in many, many campus improvement team um, plans and so, or campus improvement plans. So we're really excited and want to keep that momentum going, but we don't until we never just settle um, for the status quo. So the thing that we did notice is we want to add another um, resource. Want to keep adding tools for students, keep building that toolkit, that toolbox. And so the ones that we focused on after that um, were Bookshare and Learning Ally. So these were things that we have had in our toolbox. We've had them in our toolkit for a long time. Um, Tomball has always been a district that has had Bookshare um, and then later on Learning Ally available. But the problem was not many people were accessing it. Not many teachers really understood what it was um, and not many students were accessing it like they could. Um, so we really started pushing this and making sure that we did that same information systems, the same kind of goals for Bookshare and Learning Ally. And one of the things that I think really hits home with this is this graph to me. It shows two students. Um, and I'm going to move. So the first line, the blue line, is a starts off a sixth grade student. They both start off sixth grade students. The blue line is reading at a sixth grade level. The red line student is reading at a fourth grade level. Okay. Too often, student number two is going to be given text that's on his grade level, right? So we're going to pull them out. We're going to work with them. Hey, you know, you're two years behind. We're going to give you some interventions. We're going to work with you. But what's he missing out on when we do that? He's missing out on that grade level content, that higher level vocabulary. He's not getting that sixth grade level problem solving and the complex stories and the complex problem solving and inferencing and analysis. Instead, he's getting it at that fourth grade level. And so what happens is the more and more we do that is that gap starts getting wider and wider and wider. And that is exactly what we don't want to see. We don't want to see that loss of outcomes. We don't want to see us, hey, we're going to be compliant. We're going to put it in the IEP that we're going to pull you for 30 minutes, twice, you know, however long it is and work on this intervention. But then you're losing that access to that curriculum. You're losing all of that learning, those learning opportunities that have we looked at if we give you some auditory supports, if we give you some tools and we give you some resources and strategies that you can use lifelong, then are you going to be able to reach that grade level? We can still work on reading. We can still work on those things that maybe not taking you away from that general education curriculum. And so very powerful for us, which brings us back to, you know, adding those additional supports. So Bookshare and Learning Ally are two um, fantastic programs. They are free. Um, I believe paid for by TEA that are available for all students who meet the eligibility criteria. Now these programs are specific to students who qualify for them. And the students who can qualify for Bookshare and Learning Ally are those who are blind or have low vision. So um, all of your students who are eligible for visual impairment, um, I think for the most part. Um, students who have a physical impairment that does affect their ability to read, um, so like cerebral palsy or other physical impairments like that. 
um, any disability that's related to a difficulty with reading. So your students with a specific learning disability in any area of reading, your students with dyslexia, um, you could look at some of your other students um, in special education or 504 with different disabilities, but they would have to have some kind of documented um, difficulty with reading. And one of the ways that we can look at that if we're unsure is going back to that UPAR. So if you look at the UPAR and where their grading level is, if you give them auditory supports, can they get to grade level? Those kind of things can be some evidence for you to use for that documentation as well. But what Bookshare and Learning Allies do is they are text readers. So they actually have a whole library of books um, online. They also, Bookshare, I believe, and I'm thinking Learning Allies getting there, um, has magazines, has lots of different titles, has novels, fiction, nonfiction, textbooks um, that are available, I believe, over half a million titles in Bookshare. And um, Learning Ally, I think, is getting close to that. And so just great resources for students to be able to use that qualify. Additionally, Bookshare is always a text um, reader and it reads with a computerized voice. Learning Ally is a human voice. They both highlight um, the words as the students are reading um, and again they're free for students who qualify for them so it is pretty amazing.